You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. A Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, 
and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. I'm not ready to end the fight. I'm not ready to back down. Cause I've been through hell and I don't have time to go round and round and round. It's too late to turn back now. You know I wouldn't if I could. Cause I'm proud as hell. I can't bring myself to do what it is you think I should. All right, folks. Well, happy Thursday evening. This is Rick Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, also co-host of Jen and Rick and the Robinson and Wright Show. And you are tuning in live right now on KLNRRadio.com for the Jen and Rick Show. And we are just a few minutes, well, actually a little bit behind schedule, so we're about a quarter past the hour at this point. Hey, what can I say? I'm 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 one of the people that runs the joint. It's not like, not not like they can fire me, but the computers were being a little cranky today, so we got a late start. So sorry for those of you that have been waiting. <laughs> I apologize, but you know it is what it is. Okay, so we're gonna kind of start off with some with something that kind of occurred to me this morning, and then I realized that everybody else was talking about it on Twitter. Uh, so I posted mine on Facebook just so it didn't seem like I was stealing everybody else's ideas, but it seemed like we were kind of all having the same thoughts at the same time. So interesting thing happened last night: the Cubs won the World Series. Anybody remember Back to the Future Two, where in 2015 the Cubs were supposed to win the World Series? Seems like we were only about a year off on that one, but oddly enough, the Cubs have broke the curse. Other interesting parallels in Back to the Future 2 in 2015, Biff Tannen was trying to take over the world. In the real world, Biff Tannen's trying to take over the world in 2016. Yes, I'm referring to Donald Trump. Interesting parallels. In 2015, there were self-lacing Nikes. Interesting parallels. In 2016, there are now self-lacing Nikes. And also, uh, Michael J. Fox's, the main character, Marty McFly, in 2015 was in a car accident earlier in his life that caused him to have a severe injury that kept him from being able to play the guitar and now in real life Michael J. Fox has a debilitating illness that keeps him from playing the guitar again happening much early in his life and culminating now to the point where he's not even really able to do much acting so in honor of a segment we started for a while and hadn't been able to run it this is just one of those times folks Life imitating art about a year later. <laughs> Welcome to the WTF Files. So yeah, I mean, seriously, it was just one of those things where I was like, you know what, that's just completely weird. And then everybody else, I, I, I posted mine on Facebook, went over to Twitter, and I'm like, hmm, everybody else over here had the same thought I just did. Weird. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, it, it was. I thought it was kind of cool too. I'm just, I'm seriously sitting here going do 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 do. I I don't know. That's just a little bit too um, pointed, I guess. Even though it's a year off, it's a little bit too pointed in how uh, accurate it was. But it's always kind of fun to look at stuff like that. Did you see the guy that tweeted in 2014 that it was going to be the Cubs versus the Indians? I'm a, little, um, I'm a little sad that the end of the tweet didn't happen, though. I know, I know. He said it was going to be the apocalypse. That he was going to, he said it was going to be a tie in extra innings in Game Seven, Cubs versus Indians, which in 2014 was not even on anybody's radar. Although I'm secretly wondering, and I, I'm just playing devil's advocate, I'm wondering if that was photoshopped because it seems a little odd that that was that close. Well, but who knows? Except for there were three or four responses at the very beginning. I thought the same thing, but then there were three or four responses at the very beginning of the tweet that were also from 2014. So it would be hard to do Photoshop his tweet plus other people responding to the tweet in a way in which you could interact. You know what I mean? So in other words, there's a Nostradamus on Twitter. Right. I, I mean, yeah, or just some... <laughs> idiot that got really lucky <laughs> i mean nice. hey it, it kind of sounded like maybe it was just kind of a drunk ramble <laughs> and it's like well got that one right <laughs> well you see what had happened was Ooh, okay he's like oh my gosh i did this because <laughs> his response to people is like oh my gosh i wrote that way back when oh my gosh like he barely even remembered doing it like you know so anyways just funny just funny how stuff like that happens Oh, no, I mean, the whole thing has just been interesting because, you know, everybody thought 2015 was going to be their year and then it turned out not to be. And then, I mean, you know, you, you got to kind of feel sorry for the Cle the Cleveland Indians at this point because 
they had they they were like smacking the crap out of him in game one and game two, and then the momentum kind of swung a little bit in game three, and then they still managed to pull it out. And then it was like, eh, hey, no, these are ours. We're you're, you're done. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Wow. I didn't even really I didn't even really follow along that much because I've had too much other stuff going on. But it's been interesting to kind of catch up on the anecdotes and the side stuff, and it's just interesting, you know. I mean, these people have not won the World Series in over a hundred years. And the drought it's is now crazy. There's over. not a there's not a person alive. There is not a person living today that was alive when they last won. And my only thing to that is that, you know, I'm a Rangers fan and uh, they can take their curses and shove it because <laughs> we've never won. So I really don't care to hear about it. But um, it is interesting and it would have been a, you know, a fairly historical win for either of these ball clubs. But um what I, what I found was so cool about it was, first of all, that it went to seven games, that it was so close. It was down to extra innings. In game seven of the World Series, there was a rain delay. It was just so dramatic. It was everything that baseball is supposed to be at this level um, and at this point. And um, it was just I, – I just – I like seeing the various different, you know, human – Kind of the humanizing of it, the different stories. Like David Ross is retiring. He finally wins one. He spends most of his career with this club. Like just all of these different things. And for me, um, all these families bonding over stuff, you know, people that are like taking pictures with their 98 year old grandmothers and grandfathers that are like finally got to see the Cubs win after rooting for them their entire lives. Uh, you know, for me, sports does this in my family, and I know not every family is like this, but I mean, it is a bonder. It's a unifier. It's something that we have amazing memories we make together over. And so, you know, it's just kind of one more like, hell yeah, America type thing. Like, I just felt, I just felt like a little bit touched and, and proud last night. And I don't, I don't like the Cubs and I don't care about them winning necessarily, just just the moment of it all was just really cool. And actually, if anybody wants to read probably the most touching thing uh, I've read about all of it, uh, go to misfitpolitics.weebly.com and uh, Varen Volnero1 at Varen Volnero1 on Twitter um, wrote her own story about um, kind of what this means in her life. And it's just a really neat journey and a really cool thing how it's uh, connected to the best thing, what she calls the best thing she ever did. Really, I hadn't heard, I hadn't seen anything about that. So, so where can folks find that again? Okay, it's at misfitpolitics.weebly.com. Um, you can also go to my Twitter. I've retweeted the link a couple times. Um, her name on Twitter is Alexandra Baldwin. She's at Verum Vulnero One. Um, but it's a story of how uh, you know she had a single alcoholic mother um, who then had um, another child when she was like a tween she had another child uh whose father was a huge cubs fan and uh when her mother was no longer capable of taking care of her sister basically she fought the courts and fought her family to adopt her basically took her to, took her to live with her and her roommate in boston and uh she's turned into this amazing woman who is going to harvard and it's just a really cool story and how they've spent most of their lives um reconnecting every Thursday, watching Cubs games and uh, just, you know, being with each other and bonding in those moments. So it's just it's such a sweet story. It'll make get out the Kleenex because it'll make you cry. But um, it kind of reminds me of like why this is America's favorite pastime and the ways in which these kinds of things kind of bring people together and uh, can Invo like can evoke so many different emotions um, and feelings of nostalgia. So, anyways, check it out. No, that's actually really cool. That's why I wanted you to, to go back over it again, just in case anybody missed it the first time, because I was kind of fighting with the board and couldn't hear half of what you were saying. So, because um, <laughs> yeah, the the gremlins are still here; they're still alive and well, and my computer hates me tonight. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, so, I mean, yeah, interesting. Uh, take overall on the whole Cubs winning the World Series thing. I'm still rooting for Smod. He hadn't made it yet. I'm hoping he gets it before <laughs> inaugur Inauguration Day because no matter which one of these two wins in what, now we have, what, this is Thursday, so 
Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So basically we're, what, four or five days out um, before basically the beginning of the end of the world as we know it because no matter which one of these two wins, we're screwed. And 538 is completely like having kittens because they're like, we don't even know what to tell you anymore because it was nowhere near close and now it's starting to, to get closer and it might even be a statistical dead heat by Tuesday. And I'm just like, somebody just shoot me now. You know, look... <laughs> I get it. If you are um, one of the last resort Trump voters, you're probably getting pretty excited right now. Let me tell you why I'm not. And I've, got, I've gone over this a lot, but I'm going to go over it again. Because of all of the people on both sides of this discussion that are completely vile, abhorrent people, I'd, uh, abhorrent people, I don't want either one of these people to win. I would much prefer it get kicked to the House, so at least the House has to pick, than... Because at least then, no matter what happens, nobody can really claim a victory because it was too close to call. There weren't enough electoral votes, and we had to use the old standby of kicking into the House and figuring out who gets the election that way. I would much prefer seeing that happen at this point because no matter which one of these people win, there's going to be hate groups that are embedded in both of them. And whichever one of them wins, those hate groups are going to feel completely emboldened. And it's going to change right. the face of America as we know it. And that's why that's why I've been so against this from the beginning for either of them to get to this point because it's the first time that I can think of in my lifetime that I've ever seen presidents or presidential candidates on both sides of the aisle all completely wrapped up in hate groups and apparently oblivious to the fact that they're wrapped up in hate groups and they could care less because it's all about votes and who cares what they're saying and how mean they're being to people and how many people they're threatening to kill and how many people they're threatening to do god knows what else to because you know it's just people it's just more people that are going to vote so i just i don't get it yeah, and you know we've been talking about this five thirty eight. Uh, I I think it's I think we're gonna see a lot after this election. It's gonna really stink uh, if Hillary wins, as I think that she will, um, because we have to remember this isn't just about like what the polls are saying. Like they could be neck and neck in the polls. That does not translate to electoral votes um, in any way. So it does. I mean, it does matter. It. it it is something to, of an indication of um, kind of where the popular vote is going to be. But remember, we have an electoral college. The popular vote doesn't actually matter. Um, not in the way that it's just you don't get to throw out all the electoral votes just because it's like, oh, well, they won the popular vote. So done deal. Over. Game over. That's not how it works. And I think that uh, people really don't quite understand this and how the polls don't translate to the electoral college and I've been looking at this map over and over and over and I've been trying to figure out where it they let me let me tell it to you this way I, I as everybody now knows I'm an avid Texas Longhorns football fan well Longhorns all things but football fan especially and uh, I sat here and looked at the rest of our schedule a couple weeks ago and was like where can we get a couple more wins to make a bowl game because I'm not seeing it I don't know where it can happen. Now we beat Baylor. Okay, we got one, and it was unexpected, and it was, you know, a sloppy game, but we came out ahead. But where else on our schedule can we get those wins to to be above 500 or be 500 and go and get a bowl game? So I'm looking at it like that when I'm thinking about Trump. I'm looking at this map, and I'm going, where are there enough states to win that he can get the electoral votes needed to even come close and I'm just not seeing it. I mean, we've already, you know, Georgia has gone back and forth. Texas is possibly a swing state. There's like a bunch of different things. But let's just say, I mean, he has to take all of those. He has to take Florida. He has to take at least Ohio or Pennsylvania, but probably both. Um, so there's just, he, he needs to take Arizona. He needs to take Colorado. Um, these are things that are just not very likely for all of them to happen. Some of them might, but he needs... These things that have been red states to still be red, plus he needs to gain some swing states. And that has just been so hard for anybody to do, much less someone like him. But this is Hillary Clinton we're talking about, and she is the most unlikable candidate I've ever seen. Uh, so I but I just think that it's there when people go, oh, but no one gave the Cubs a chance to win or, oh, this is happening or that is happening or there's more people at the early polls or there's this or that. I mean, you have to take it with a grain of salt because it's just such a different ball game than uh, an actual ball game, which has chance mixed with talent 
and there's so many uncontrollable factors and moving targets, whereas uh, with the elections, there are just a lot of things that are what they are. California is blue. New York is blue. The East Coast is mostly blue. I mean, th- these are things that are undeniable and uh, are not going to change. So you can't, it, there's not a whole lot left up to chance. There's only a few swing states for a reason. And uh, it's going to be really hard for him to get those numbers. Yeah, I mean, I'm not thoroughly convinced that 538 should be having the kittens that they're having yet. Because um, the, <laughs> the, the, the big, if, if you break it down, because the interesting thing about that site is it shows you all of the different places they get their variables from. Shows you the popular vote, shows you the the percentages, shows you the electoral college. And the swing in the electoral college has been basically non-existent. I mean, she was at like 303, 304 uh, she's at 280 something now. I think the last time I looked, it was either 280 something or 290 something. So the swing so far has been fairly negligible. I mean, the biggest switch, um, which I'm not sure if it makes a good friend of ours happy or unhappy, is Texas seems to be going back into the red column. Um, or not, I said Texas, sorry, I meant Georgia. Georgia is going yeah. back into the red column where just. Uh, about seven to ten days ago they had it listed as a possible swing state where they weren't sure which way it was going to go um it seems like maybe the early voting reporting is maybe changing that or it could have more to do with well and i don't and and i don't think that we should underestimate the effect of the effects of this recent you know renewed fbi investigation kind of thing because i do think that there are people that are you know typically GOP all the way voters that are turned off by Trump, they see through his BS factor, they don't like it, that are thinking not that they're going to vote for Hillary, but they might vote third party or they might not vote for president at all, um, that this kind of thing happens and maybe they reevaluate that a little bit. And he's done a pretty good job of staying kind of on message and not doing a whole lot of uh, dramatic, you know, screwed up things to take the attention away from these new, you know, these new things that are coming out about her. So I think that uh, we can't underestimate the fact that that is possibly playing into this. Will that result in, you know, some overall statement um, in these states? I don't know. But it certainly seems to have changed the polls a little and seems to have changed some of the early voting from the predictors. No, and, and, and I, I didn't necessarily mean to think that the early voting is having a, a sway on that because I honestly don't even know if anybody knows how that's going yet. Um, I know. I, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of it might actually have to do with what you just said um, because, I mean, at this point, I mean, look, the thing about it is whether you think Comey did the right thing the first time or the wrong thing the second time or vice versa, the simple fact of the matter is Hillary Clinton has now been under investigation more than Al Capone. <laughs> I mean, if you really yeah. want to go yeah. all, all the way back to like Watergate and all the things that she's been involved in throughout the, the history of her career in politics and tertiarily involved in politi- politics, etc. She has been under investigation more times than Al Capone. And the simple fact of the matter is I think, so there, are, I think there are a <laughs> lot of people that have, that have just decided they've had enough. I mean, I, I have seen, and um, a good friend of ours that goes by Beaker on Twitter can attest to this because he was actually in Pennsylvania today in a th- <laughs> solidly blue area. And he was completely freaked out because everywhere he looked, he was seeing Trump signs. And I'm not talking like little bitty Let's put it in. Let's put it in the corner of the window so nobody can really see it's there. But at least if somebody asks, we can say we supported Trump. No, not those little stickers. We're talking like billboard-sized Trump stickers. Right. Trump, Trump billboards in their yards. I mean, we're talking like you know, five by five signs in everybody's yards. And he's like, I've never seen anything like this. This is like the bluest of the blue area in Pennsylvania, and it's filled with Trump signs. He's like, I've seen maybe one Hillary sign. The rest of them are Trump signs. And by signs, I mean billboards. I, I think, unfortunately, what Trump has done very well um, is he's tapped into, he's 
well, I, I guess the thing with Trump is he's figured out what anger Inc. has known for a very long time. There are lots of angry people in this country, and if you can tap into what makes them angry and get them to feed off of each other's angry, anger and build on it, then you've got a winning solution. And that's what he's done. And that's why the more of these stories that come out with Hillary, the more angry everyone gets, and the worse it looks for her and the better it looks for him. But the thing about it is, and it, this is something that you know, folks like me and Glenn Beck and a few others have been saying it now for years. If you get to the point where you have this country running on nothing but anger and we go to the point where we are that dark, when we go that dark, before we can come back, we will make Nazi Germany look like a bunch of Girl Scouts. And we are nearly there because we have hate groups on from coming from every single direction at this point. You got black people calling for the segregation of white people. You got well, white, you got, and they're voluntarily segregating themselves now. You've got white people that are calling for the eradication of anybody that's not white. You've got people that if you're a Hillary, if you're not a Hillary supporter, they want you deported. If you're not a Trump supporter, they want you hung over the new wall. I mean, there's, there's just, there, it's just everywhere. It's nothing but anger, hatred, and vitriol. And that's what completely worries me is I don't see any way back from this. And I don't think the solution, I mean, last time we did what we always do. We took our lumps. We took our losses. We tried to rally behind Obama and we got our asses handed to us. And th that's not going to happen this time. I am thoroughly terrified, and I'm, I'm being completely honest right now. I am terrified that no matter which one of these two jabronis winds up with the vote by the end of Tuesday night, somebody's going to not like the result, and there's going to be... It's going to be tied up in the courts again. There's going to be all these issues because there's going to be, well, Soros owns these machines and it's no wonder that they, they did this and they were changing my vote and the counts are off and I demand a recount and that one was too close to call. So we're going to have to recount that one. And then while all of that's going on, all these people that are angry on all sides are going to be attacking everybody over it. I just, I, I seriously am envisioning riots in the streets. I really hope I'm wrong. Because I don't, I don't want to see that, but I think we're that close. I really do, because everybody is so angry that they don't even talk to each other anymore. I mean, you saw evidence of that today in a group that we're in, that somebody that we have been, that I've been talking to for as long as I've been doing this stuff with JD and Stacy, just up and left a group and just, just no, no goodbye, no screw you guys, no nothing, just I'm out, I'm gone. I, it, it, it's, it's happening more and more. That's like a, an account that I followed for a long time that, uh, their handle, I think, was Rock the USSA. Went over to the Gab AI place and came back a full-on Trumper. I'm just, yeah. it, it's like, it's literally like watching a disease. And before anybody says that I'm slamming Trump folks, let me let me tell you something. The diehard Hillary supporters, they aren't any better. It, it, it literally, it's like watching two versions of the same virus affect different parts of the brain. It's crazy. Yeah, it certainly feels like it. I mean, you and I have both talked about that we completely understand, like, feeling the need to vote. You can't stomach a third party vote because you think that that will help Hillary or in some way will, you know, just be some sort of demise of the republic um, if she gets office. I I understand, like, the fear of Hillary. I understand, uh, to a certain extent, at least. I, I think there's a lot of irrational fear out there, too. But I understand um, voting because of that. I, I, I understand the, the holding the nose to a, to a certain extent again. But I I don't, what, I, what has been so shocking to me has been um, the people that start out that way and then it just seems like you said, it's just like it just infects their brain. And then suddenly they are defending all of these crazy things. Um, they are, you know, preaching about it. They are uh, taking up all of his justifications and rationalizations of the most absurd stuff that's going on. It It, it has blown my mind. And I'm not talking about idiots that have never voted before or that don't ever pay attention to politics. I'm talking about smart people, people that have had some of them that have had a profound effect on my life that I do think are, are actually intelligent human beings who have had successful careers and who are eloquent, uh, that have just kind of, I, I, I said it to my mom earlier. There's just, it's like a poison and it's like this takes over their brain and then and and I hope it goes away when he goes away, but I don't know that it will. It's 
it's so bizarre. It's been such an eye opener to watch. Oh, speaking of eye openers, we've got a couple of stories to talk about when we get back, but it's time to take a break and pay some bills. You are listening to Jen and Rick live right here on KLNRradio.com. We'll be back back in just a couple minutes as soon as I can find the right button and we can make sure the commercials run. Yes, I'm having one of those nights. Live radio folks, deal with it. I'll be, we'll be right back. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. I'm not ready to end the fight. I'm not ready to back down. Because I've been through hell and I don't have time to go round and round and round. It's too late to turn back now You know I wouldn't if I could Cause I'm proud as hell I can't bring myself to do what it is You think I should God's Pure Word of Faith with Richard Harden can now be heard Monday through Friday mornings at 7 a.m. Central, 8 Eastern and on Saturday and Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Join him and let's turn our country back to God. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. Let's get on fire for the Lord. Right here on KLRN Radio and the Spark Radio Network. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing before maturity. A Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. 
Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. You know I wouldn't if I could Cause I'm proud as hell I can't bring myself to do what it is You think I should All right, folks, welcome back. We're already into the second half of the show. My, oh, my, where does the time go? We've got about 25 minutes left before we got to make room for the Rhino Report, and we have a couple of stories we still haven't really talked about too much yet. I think I'm going to let you take lead on the one that you shared, if you don't mind. Oh, my gosh, which one did I share? <laughs> Uh-oh, I caught her flat-footed, folks. Doesn't happen often, but uh, let's see. I, I, I was putting so many different things in there i'm trying to remember too many groups mm-hmm. uh, oh 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 about the google and network news that, oh yeah yeah that one that one that one i thought that was okay cool. so so this has been what has been spreading like a wildfire on uh the hardcore trumper twitter today um it has been about how so wait you've been uh, on gab Alex- today oh wait, wait. <laughs> i was not but I came across this. I don't even remember how. Um, but uh, Alex Jones, he uncovered how local news networks are preparing Hillary victory graphics nationwide. It's like bombshell tonight. He has cracked the code. He's figured it out. They've they're, It's rigged. They're all in for Hillary. And beyond that, the system already has Hillary winning because the system is right. Um, sorry, sorry, Alex. Um, sorry, Trump supporters that want to believe this. But this is very common. This is standard practice. Google, network news, um, yeah, newspapers, all of these different media outlets are going to pre-design uh winning logos, presidential logos, whatever, for Trump and Hillary ahead of this election so that they have it in file, ready to go um, for whatever happens. It's just like last night. The Cubs won the World Series, right? As we talked about 538 earlier, they only gave them a 31% chance of winning the World Series. But what happened? They immediately had World Championship t-shirts and hats and pins, and all sorts of other memorabilia and merchandise um, that said, you know, Chicago Cubs, World Series 2016 champions, because that's what they do. This is not news, people. This is not a conspiracy theory. Uh, There are kids running around all over third world countries wearing championship t-shirts of of people, uh, of people. uh, teams that never won the championship in the years that the t-shirt states or the ball cap states. Um, same as there are buttons and, uh, and and actually some of these are very valuable if you collect presidential memorabilia at all. Um, there are buttons, there are newspapers, there are all sorts of things like that that are printed or um, ha- were made that say the loser's name on it um, as the winner. So this is... Much ado about nothing, but leave it to the alt-right Twitter to make it try to be a, an actual conspiracy. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up because, and that's the thing that nobody talks about. And 
you know, I'm, I'm going to try to turn this into a bit of a joke for a second. But have you seen what happens when these news folks put together really quick graphics? I, I saw it again the other day. Um, uh, somebody had actually tried to say something about where something was located. And instead of, you know, uh, where are they now? W-H-E-R-E. It said W-E-A-R. And then they cut away from it and they came back to it and then somebody quickly and hastily fix the typo. They have to do these type of things well in advance now because one, if they don't, they're going to look stupid because somebody's going to spell something wrong. Two, it's it's just good work because then it makes everything look as professional as possible. It's no different than, you know, the graphics for the shows and everything that we do. We don't typically throw those up last minute. Um, it takes sometimes days, if not weeks, to prep those things um, because there's tweaks. And, I mean, you know this firsthand because you were helping Jess with the revamp of the the graphic for my, uh, my other show. And it was just mm-hmm. one of those things where we were working on it back and forth and she was shooting me ideas and I was shooting her ideas. And she said, oh, by the way, Je- uh, Jen came up with something. And what do you think about this? I'm like, I love Jen. That was a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it takes fresh eyes, you know? But yeah, so I mean, it's just one of those things where if you're trying to make things look good and you want them to look like they they, they, were, they were important, most of the time that takes prep work. And, it, it, and again, I don't... Uh, it's no different than, you know, I'm sure right now the Cleveland Indians are burning some World Series t-shirts because they didn't get there. But I guarantee you they had t-shirts made up just in case they did. Just saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It it just, you know, it cracked me up and I saw it had like a couple thousand retweets and then a couple other people had shared it separately that had several thousand retweets. And I was going, oh, my goodness, can we just not even have the slightest bit of uh, just you know, thinking logically here, let's just, let's just look at it and be objective and think logically before we jump to conclusions and go into mass hysteria about bias and corruption and conspiracy here. Well, I mean, it's 2016. So of course not. Yeah. There's really no such thing as logic anymore. Um, There was actually a conversation I had with someone today who shall remain nameless. Um, and we were actually having a discussion about direct deposit and that person was under the assumption that direct deposit was instantaneous because their check showed up every Friday. I'm like, you realize that in order for your check to show up every Friday, the bank that your, that your job does business with your, your business, your job has to tell them to initiate that transaction usually at least 72 hours prior. It's not instantaneous. It's not like, it's it's not a transporter. It's not like boom, the money's there. No, that that's not how any of that stuff works. It still involves computers. There's still plenty of things that have to move back and forth. But that's the world we live in now because people are so used to having, you know, air conditioning at their fingertips or heat at their fingertips. So if you're too hot, too cold, you can have it fixed within a couple of minutes. If you're hungry, you can go get something out of the freezer, plop it in a microwave. You got food in front of you in two, three minutes tops. If you, I mean, it, it's it's just the world we live in now. There, there really is no far out, far thinking process anymore because everything is instantaneous. And it's getting sometimes even worse because, and I was thinking about this the other day. When I was a kid, if you needed an answer to something, then you had to either find a way to get the information from somebody who understood it or you went to a library or your school's library and you looked it up using a book. You don't even have to do that anymore. If you want information, it is immediately available at your fingertips as long as you have access to the internet. And the problem with that is the information is becoming as profitable as anything else in this world has ever been. And people are finding ways to profit on it, even though they shouldn't. And it's happening everywhere. And you're probably wondering where I'm going with this. But there was a story that happened. I I think we talked about it on Tuesday night, but it's still just as relevant now. It was either Tuesday night or I talked about it a little bit last night. I don't remember. But Sean Hannity, of all people, was actually quoting a fake story on his radio show because he didn't take time to vet anything because information is instantly available at your fingertips now. There's a 24-7 news cycle that has to constantly be fed. And it's the same situation we find ourselves over and over again because folks like Alex Jones and all of these other people that make money off of disinformation aren't doing it because it's a service. They tell everybody that, that, that it is. They tell everyone that we're, they're the true heroes because they're the ones that are finding you the truth when nobody else will. But the simple fact of the matter is they're, not, they're nothing but clickbait salesmen. Sean Hannity became one of those the other day because he quoted a disreputable source. And then when he figured out he was wrong, instead of mea culpa and falling on the sword and saying, hey, yeah, I, I screwed up, I get it. As soon as he said that, well, you know, Elizabeth Warren did the same thing too, though. 
That's the world we live in now. Uh, we're just... Can it be over? I'm, my thing is, is that even though once it's over... So here we are Thursday. Uh, the next time that we talk, uh, it's going to be election coverage. Um, not you and me personally, but on air. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's going to be election coverage. She um, just let the cat out of the bag, bag, folks. We don't talk before shows ever. We don't even like each other. We just pretend. No, I'm just <laughs> Well, what is funny, though, is that we don't talk that much before shows, but we talk continuously all day, every day. <laughs> That's because usually for some reason on show days, you and I are so freaking busy, we don't have time to talk. And then we'll every time. What is that? It's always Tuesday and Thursdays. I'll be like, OK, on Monday, I've talked to Rick 25 times on Tuesday. I've talked to him once and it was at 8 a.m. <laughs> like, what is going on? It's always like that. It's so funny. But hey, uh, it seems to work out all right. But um I, I just have this bad feeling about where we go after this. Uh, I I think Hillary's going to win. And I think that uh, I just think uh, Trumpers are going to die hard. I think it's going to be. Um, but there's going to be a lot of crap for several months that we have to deal with and and uh, here and all sorts of conspiracy stuff and lawsuits possibly and who knows what else i just i just am not sure that it i think it's going to be really ugly i just want to know if alex jones is getting a spot on trump tv oh my gosh i don't know get him out of austin you know i mean i'm sure alex jones is probably in the running i'm, I'm sure one i of the, the very first time i ever saw alex jones was on the uh, local like cable access channels here in Austin right after 9-11. That's the first, I mean, he was on what's like channel seven or whatever, where they also will like broadcast, they, they let people like that broadcast whenever they're not broadcasting like the school board meetings and crap like that. Yeah, um, the ones where you can barter yeah. airtime for like uh, three chickens and a goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's where... I mean, that's where he he got his start. That's where he was right here in Austin, Texas. And it was, oh, gosh, even back then, my brother, I'll never forget my brother and I sitting upstairs in our parents house, like watching the TV in the game room um, after 9-11, like watching him just go off and say all these nuts of things. And we would just laugh. And we thought it was his, we thought he was so entertaining. and It was so hysterical. We're like, this guy is crazy. And then we would say something to somebody else and go, have you seen that? Oh yeah. The guy with the guy with the long hair that rants and raves and says that like, you know, other things are controlling the government and that the Saudis are in control of the bushes and the blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah. And then later he came up with all of the inside job stuff and what, anyways, we, I mean, it was like late night, like entertainment TV, like grab the popcorn after you went to like the party with your friends and you got home and you were buzzed, like watch Alex Jones on, on cable, on local cable access channel. Oh, what, how, how incredible the career he's made for himself off of a bunch of BS. And, and you know, that's the scary thing because I mean, with him, you always kind of knew what you were getting. For some reason, now in 2016, he's become mainstream. That's another thing that terrifies me about this election cycle. Alex Jones has become mainstream. He was actually at the RNC. Let, let, let that sink in for just a second. <sighs> Alex Jones, the king of inside job, was at the RNC. Uh, that, that, that is how far the GOP has fallen. I mean, dude, that would be like the that would be like Hillary Clinton inviting George Nori to the DNC. Yeah, yeah, dude. But George Nori, I mean, gosh, Alex Alex Jones made George Nori look sane. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, to a point, but you know, then they. Start. Well, I I mean, it's just like he he's at least more like believable has a little bit like uh, his reasoning seems more sound. He doesn't scream at the camera and take off his shirt and like do all sorts of crazy crap. I don't know. Alex Jones is off his rocker and I think it's all a show and I think everyone's been conned just like they've been conned by Donald Trump. End of story. Speaking of Donald Trump and Alex Jones having their shirt off. Did, did you see the, the show that Dan and I put together a couple of weeks ago that I wound up renaming from Russia with Love and I put the graphic of, you know, uh, Putin and Trump on the horse together? 
I don't know if I, I don't know if I told you this, but somebody took that when I reshared it with the new stuff on it, and they actually tagged Trump Jr., Trump, and uh, AJ Delgado, and that thing's been listened to like nine hundred times. I'm sure Dan and I are on, on some watch list by now. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is really funny. No, I did not know that. That is hysterical. Good for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're probably on some Trump watch list at this point because they're going to be like, yeah. Well, he's going to deport you. If we he's win, gonna... these guys are toast. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. I live out in the middle of nowhere. Come try to find me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be deported too. It's fine. See, I know how to get back in. Well, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> he's not building that wall. I can get back in. But, but, you know, that, that's the thing about those of us that are trying to call it down the center. Uh, the, the, the Trumpers are like, you should vote for him because otherwise we're, we're going to deport you. Um, really, no matter who wins at this point, there's a pretty good chance that somebody's going to try to throw me on a list somewhere because I've been calling it straight down the middle and telling you they both suck. So neither neither one of these administrations is going to like me. Uh, yeah. And, and a bunch of other people that I know. Um because you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm this all important guy. Because Lord knows I'm not. But you know, I mean, when, when people start sharing your shows to Trump children, you know you're going to wind up on a list somewhere. <laughs> yes. Because if you think Daddy's bad, pay close attention to the kids. You remember that scene in um, Billy Madison? Uh, Adam Sandler calls hit the guy from high school that he was mean to. Yeah. And. He's got a list, like a hit list, you know, and he like crosses there. I mean, I feel like that's what Eric Jr. has. I mean, uh, Donald Trump Jr. has is he's got like some hit list because he's kind of the quiet one. So he's the one that's like making the list and sitting there with the charts on the wall, um, ready to take people out. Oh, I so you're on the list. I mean, I am, too. It's fine. Eh, I'll take it. I don't mind being either on either one of their lists because, you know, to me anymore, it's it's not. I, and this has kind of been a, a, a life changing year for me because I really honestly thought if we just kept pushing hard enough, eventually we would get people to understand that the Republican Party is not how the Democrats portrayed it. And yet yeah. we've proven every single one of their stereotypes. I mean, there are people that know what Bannon actually stands for, and yet he's hip deep in the Trump campaign. So I, mean, I actually let's let's flip this a little bit because you and I know um, the things that we that that people on our side say about liberals, and we know that a lot of those things uh, are what conservatives say they are, but liberals have been able to portray it as something completely different and they control the media and they control education and all these things. What would it take for us for, for somehow for them to get someone that exposed the left as much as Trump exposed at least part of the right? Obviously it's not the whole right. And I will not accept that premise that it's the entire right. And that the, you know, the left had us pegged the whole time. But um, that certainly there's that faction there and there is that that portion of people that are very loud and very angry and will and, and will exemplify all the things that they accused us of. Where does that come from on the left and how can it be exposed? I don't know. I don't know if it can be because of all the cover ups they can do. But wouldn't that be interesting? To see them outed. Well, I, I think in some ways you're already seeing it. It's just a little different this time. Because with the left, I mean, the thing about it is the Donald Trump and the hate stuff, it, it, it kind of really, it, it's kind of a groundswell thing for him. It, it's, it's starting at the bottom and it's working its way up. And in a lot of ways, I honestly, I know he's aware of it, but I don't think he fully comprehends exactly how bad it is. And I think that's one of the reasons why he's been able to stay somewhat detached from it. But the difference is with the Democrats, for them, it's the top down. I mean, this is not something they've tried to hide. It's not anything that it's not anything that they've tried to keep under wraps. There has been a segment of the Republican population that didn't want their thoughts to come into light, just like there are segments of the Democratic population that are just as racist, just as homophobic, and they don't want people to know they exist either. But as far as the overall corruption and the overall things that are going on between the parties, for the Democratic Party, it's a lot different because they embrace that side of themselves. They embrace it and then they try to bury it because they they won't hide it from you if you ask them. That That's the difference between 
them and and folks like Donald Trump and everybody else. They will if they're talking amongst themselves, they don't hide it. Look at what Hillary's been saying in public that she says completely different in private about how, you know, if you're a politician and especially if you're a liberal politician, you have to have a public stance on something and you have to have a private stance on some on something. That would have ended any Republican's political career permanently if something like that had been leaked. And yet we know she said that and she still in a dead heat for the presidency. She's been under investigation now not once, but twice, and yet she's still in a dead heat for the presidency. And we know these things. And it's because that side is perfectly comfortable with the muck that they live in. That's why I'm so concerned seeing the direction that the Republican Party is going now, because we used to say we weren't comfortable being there. I've seen way too many people that have instantly, within the last 18 months, become comfortable with being there. I, for one, will never be comfortable with being there. That's why I call it out on both sides when I see it. And look, I'm not saying that all Democrats are bad or that all liberals are bad, because I know good, decent Democrats and liberals. I have friends that are Democratic. I have friends that are liberals. And we have conversations all day long. And we don't yell at each other. We don't scream at each other. We just talk about the things that we view differently. And that's the thing. It, we keep letting ourselves get drugged to one side of the extreme or the other by the loudest vocalist part of our parties and neither one of those are good things when it really comes down to it because those aren't the people that actually have our best interests at heart those are the ones that are finding ways to either shore up their own power or they found a way to make money off of this and they want to keep making money off of it and i think that is ultimately what has doomed this election cycle because the folks at anger inc knew that there was a there was really no way in hell that a Republican wasn't going to get the nomination this year and then ultimately wind up with the presidency. They they knew. And there are a lot of them that I think have colluded behind the scenes to make sure that no matter what happens, because at this point, even if Trump manages to pull this out, Anger Inc. will be will have fodder for four years because they're going to be able to talk about how crooked it was, how rigged it was, how we got lucky, how if it wasn't for them pushing and screaming and yelling and kicking, they're going to get to carry each other around on their, on every, on their own shoulders now if Trump pulls this thing off. If he doesn't, then they still win because they're going to get to bash Hillary for four years and their ratings are going to be higher than they ever were because they're going to get to, well, if you guys would have listened to me, we'd have Trump right now and everything would be better. No, really, that's not true either. But you've managed to engineer it in a way where no matter what, you manage to keep your your spot on the catbird seat and the rest of us are going to suffer. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't even, I don't even know what to say anymore. I just don't. I mean, he is going super globalist and pro Goldman Sachs. So there's that. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, the the whole, you know, Trump's not a globalist and he's anti Goldman Sachs. Really? How many He's anti banks and big banks and he's not controlled by anybody and no one's pulling the strings. Yeah, let me want to hire a guy as my or put a guy as Treasury Secretary that has not only donated to Obama and Clinton, um, but who is a Goldman Sachs, former Goldman Sachs partner and a Soros Fund management employee. No big deal. Yeah. What is that old Pinocchio song? No strings on me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give me Not buying it. But yeah, so, you know, that that's the last little story we had to touch on. So those of you who don't know, and this isn't the first time, by the way, that somebody affiliated with Goldman Sachs has been within stone's throwing distance of the campaign. And it's interesting that they keep talking about all the Soros money that's been going to Hillary since Trump himself has taken money from Soros. And I guess it's not really surprising that he would bring someone into the campaign who's donated to both Hillary and Obama since he's done the very same thing. So why not? I just, you know, I mean, he can't really throw a stone at that because, hey, he's done it too. But, you know, it was different then because he was a businessman and you have to play both sides of both sides of the aisle if you're going to be good in business in D.C. Um, I guess that means I would probably never be good in business in D.C. because I've run several businesses and never given to people that I don't agree with. Yeah, I, I don't buy any of that. I'm sorry. Um, I you that That is the definition of pay for play. Oh, I had to do it because I was in business and because that... It, no, you mean because you wanted favors, because you wanted to get into a certain circle, because you wanted to have some sort of 
priority or an ear lended to you, uh, that, that is pay for play. Uh, so just shut up about it because that, that's the only reason to do that. I have worked for someone off and on for the last decade who is very conservative, owns a bunch of businesses in Austin. He would never dream of giving to a Democrat because he does not believe in anything they have to offer or help him with. Is he friends with Democrats? Does he wine and dine and schmooze with them? Yes. Give them money? No. So it's just a completely, I I just think it's such a BS argument. And uh, if you are donating to someone because it's quote unquote business, then that means that you're looking for political favors, which means that you are trying to corrupt the system. So uh, if you're trying to do it on that side, of course, you're going to do it on the other as well. Because you see no problem with it. It's just business. All right. Sorry. I just had all, kinds of, <laughs> had all kinds of emails wind up coming through at the last minute while we've been talking. The other affiliates are blowing up my email boxes again, try, trying to get ready for CRN. Anyway, I just realized we are officially out of time while I've been going through my email box. So uh, why don't we do what we always do? And on the way out, why don't you remind folks where they can interact with you when you're not on the air with me? Okay, come hang out with me on Twitter while I yell at people. No, I'm just playing. Uh, well, sometimes, no, but not, not all the time. <laughs> uh, but it's a lot of fun around there. So come hang out with me at Jay Homestead. And uh, I'm on Facebook, sort of, J.R. Homestead and MisfitPolitics.Weebly.com. And let me remind you to go look at that piece by um, at Vulnero one follower too, because she's awesome and really smart. But uh, a little bit about live love and America's favorite pastime. You won't be sorry. All right. And on that note, I am Rick Robinson. I'm the regular host here on America Off the Rails every Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Also co-host of Jen and Rick, what you're listening to right now on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 Eastern. Uh, and then also uh, Robinson and Wright on Friday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern. However, um, I will be taking tomorrow night off. This is the last home uh, game of the season, and this will be the one that determines whether or not my son goes to the or wins district championship and then goes on to the playoffs. So I will not be missing that game, and I may actually be taking a couple more off depending on what happens with that game tomorrow since – They've actually already beat two of the three teams that they're going to be playing in the playoffs, which means they have a really good shot at going to state, even though they have to play them again, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Because they've already beat two of the three teams. The third one is the one tomorrow that is for the district championship. And then even if they win it, they still they get the home field advantage for th- the, the three playoff games. and But then they still have to play the same three teams they just beat hey but um, this so. is like what used to happen in the big 12 you would beat them during the regular season so have to play them in the big 12 championship and it could ruin your entire chances at anything shut it woman <laughs> oklahoma and texas both know this well we both got burned by that shush shush you're jinxing you're jinxing <laughs> shush all right so anyway we're, we're out folks we will be back with you there will be no technically no jen and rick show on tuesday because we will be doing wall-to-wall debate coverage we will be there for the cheering the weeping the gnashing, yeah. gnashing of teeth whichever one of those things occurs and depending on who wins i will likely be doing the weeping and the gnashing gnashing of teeth no matter who wins so tune in for me when i'm there <laughs> probably around the same time that we're on right now um because it has to be quiet around here for me to do radio <laughs> <laughs> We're out, folks. Have a good night. Take care. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same.